one of the most important concepts in mathematics is the concept of rate of change. We begin talking about the concept of rate of change without talking about a rate of change. We first develop the concept of a fundamental triangle. Now that's something that's, and I wouldn't say unique to this course, I'm sure other people do something similar, but not everybody does. It's not part of the standard pre-calculus lexicon. So this is something you might well regard as unique to this course. Don't use the term in polite society without defining it. Okay, because people might not know what you're talking about, but in this course we will know. Okay, so a fundamental triangle for two points. Let's just say we have the points 3, 7, and 12, 4 on some coordinate axis. I don't need an x and a y axis to do this. Okay, we've got two points. I sketch the line segment between them. That segment is going to be the hypotenuse of my fundamental triangle. Now, assuming the x-axis is horizontal and the y-axis is vertical, we then draw a side from one of these points. Okay, these points are going to be what we call the vertices of the triangle. Remember, the triangle has three vertices. Those are the <coughs> corner points, if you wish. This is two of the vertices. Okay, one of the sides is going to be horizontal, and the other side is going to be vertical. So we're going to have a triangle. Vertex here, vertex here, here's the hypotenuse. One side is horizontal, one side is vertical. There are two ways I can draw this triangle. I can draw it here. Actually, there are two fundamental triangles. Okay, I can draw one here with the horizontal leg through this vertex and the vertical leg through this vertex. I could as well have drawn the triangle with the horizontal leg through this vertex and the vertical leg through this vertex. Okay? I don't draw them both, but here I'm showing you that there are two of them and they're similar triangles. Um, didn't quite get my horizontal right here so it doesn't look like they're exactly similar, but they are if you follow the definition. Okay, so I'm going to redraw the triangle. And if there was a class here, I'd let the class choose which triangle we want to use. It doesn't matter which triangle we use, but I'm going to go ahead and use the first one I drew. Okay. And now I'm going to choose a direction from one vertex to the other. And usually we go left to right, but it's not necessary that you do that. But I'm going to put a little arrow there, indicating that's the direction that we're going to go. So we're going to go from this vertex to this vertex. And we're going to go along the path through the two legs that takes us from this vertex to this vertex. Okay? And those are going to be what we regard as our positive directions, especially as it... I mean, those will be... Okay, we're moving in those directions. And our motion is going to be positive or negative according to whether it's in the direction of the y positive y-axis or the negative y-axis, positive x-axis or negative x-axis. Specifically, if I go from here to here, my y-coordinate goes from 7 to 4. Okay, so y-coordinate is 7, y-coordinate is 4. The change in the y-coordinate as I follow the path from here to here, I'll use delta y for the change in y. And that's the y-coordinate where we end up, which is 4, minus the y-coordinate where we started, which is 7. And we see that our change in y from here to here is negative 3. We go 3 units from 7 down to 4 in the negative direction. So we have a, y, a change in y of negative 3. Okay? 
from here to here, this leg of the triangle corresponds to a change in our x value. And the x value changes from 3 to 12. So the change in x is 12 minus 3 equals 9. Okay? Now, what I want to get up here is I want to get the slope. Well, the words that should come into everybody's mind when I say slope is rise over run. Rise divided by run. Slope is rise divided by run. I'm always a little bit concerned that people give me a formula. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1 typically. That's a formula. It's not an idea. It's a formula. There's an idea behind the formula and we have to think in terms of ideas if we're going to retain things. If we're going to really understand what we're doing well enough to perform in this transition course from lower level mathematics to somewhat higher level mathematics, which is what pre-calculus is. Okay. Slope is rise divided by run. The rise is the change in the y-coordinate divided by the change in the x-coordinate. Now we don't remember slope equals delta y over delta x, although that's a good thing to know. Slope is rise over run. Rise is the change in the y-coordinate. Run is the change in the x-coordinate. Okay? And that slope then equals, in this case, the change in the y coordinate is negative 3, change in the x coordinate is 9, and that reduces down to negative 1 third. Okay, so on this triangle, I'm going to indicate that the slope is negative 1 third by writing negative 1 third here. Of course, if I write negative 1 third next to this segment, we don't know if that means the distance from here to here or what. We don't know that that means slope. So I have the convention. Again, that's the convention I use in my courses for indicating the slope. You put a box around it, a rectangle, and you put it next to the slope. Also, uh, we don't put any of these numbers inside the triangle because there just isn't that much room inside the triangle. We make them outside the triangle. Okay, so to complete this, I'm going to say the rise is delta y, which equals 4 minus 7, which is negative 3. The run is delta x, which is 12 minus 3, which is 9. And the slope is rise over run. That's written off to the side somewhere. Don't clutter up the picture of the triangle. But there we have it. Well, that's what I mean by fundamental triangle. Again, the hypotenuse is between two points that define the triangle, and the two points that define the triangle are called vertices, and one leg is horizontal, one leg is vertical. Each leg has to go through a vertex, so one leg goes through one vertex, the other leg goes through the other. It doesn't matter if you do the horizontal through this vertex or this one, but then you got to do uh, the vertical through the other vertex. Okay, anyhow. Okay, so a fundamental triangle for a function with two x values, uh, for a function for two x values. Okay, so let's just go ahead and use one of our basic functions. And let's choose to use the exponential function, basic exponential function. We draw our coordinate points. First we make the table, and I'm not going to do that because hopefully by the time that you see this, you'll be able to do what I did just as quickly as I did it, and I didn't even try to do it very quickly. You should be able to do it that quickly at least. 
<coughs> okay, right there's our graph. Now, I want function for two x values. So, um, uh, it's a fundamental triangle for two x values. Now, I'm not going to choose x values where I actually know the y value. I'm going to let x equal one half and two. I do know the y value for x equals two. So, we want the fundamental triangle, which I'll abbreviate with FT. So there we have fundamental triangle for x equals 1 half and x equals 2 for the basic exponential function. Okay, well, x is 1 half. I need two points out here in the plane. They're going to be the two points on the graph of the function. Okay, so here are two points, the point corresponding to x equals 1 half, the point corresponding to x equals 2. I'm going to draw my hypotenuse. And I'll figure out where I want to label this. If I do the vertical leg here, I don't have a lot of room to label it. The, x, the axis gets in the way, so I'm going to do the horizontal leg through this vertex and the vertical leg through this vertex. Now, I want to label the coordinates of the points. This is going to lead to a problem here. Because we don't know how to calculate the coordinate for x equals one-half. We would have to take a calculator to get an approximation. Of course, it would give us a very good approximation. Well, we're not going to do that. I don't want to use a calculator here. I'm going to approximate it because I want to learn to see what's actually going on on the graph. Okay, so the y-coordinate of this point is whatever this is between 1 and 2. So we could estimate what this is. Now, halfway between 1 and 2 would be about here. This is a little lower. Um, so I'm going to estimate. I think it's between 1.3 and 1.4, but I don't, I don't really know. I'm going to estimate the y-coordinate is about 1.4. So the coordinates of this point are one half, 1.4. Now, I happen to know what the square root of 2 is, and I happen to know that a little over 1.4, but doing an honest approximation on the graph, I probably would have estimated 1.38, just the way I drew the graph. So, based on estimates, we have this point and this point. So, what? Well, the run, and I'm going to write this out to the side, Well, before I can determine what the run is, I've got to decide in what direction I want to move here. Well, I'm going to move left to right, which means when I get over here, I've got to move up so that if I start at this point and follow this path, I get to this point. If I start at this point and follow this path, I get to this point. Okay, so my run is delta x, and that is going to be use little wavy equal signs for approximately equal to because we don't really know what the actual coordinate here is. It's approximately equal to and I'm looking at the y coordinate because I'm being careless. Let's see if I can get over that. Okay, so the run is this x coordinate minus this x coordinate, which is going to be 2 minus 1 half, which is 3 halves. The rise, so here we have the run is 3 halves. Here are the rise. equals the y-coordinate minus the y-coordinate, that's 4, 
minus 1.4. which is 2.6. So, the slope equals rise over run which is 2.6 divided by 3 halves okay, which is 2 thirds of 2.6 which is approximately 1.67. Now, 1.67 is a lot of significant figures when I've only estimated this to two significant figures. So I'm going to round that off to two significant figures because our estimates just aren't accurate enough to justify a 1.67 as opposed to say a 1.7. So I round off my 1.67 to 1.7 and then I write my slope here as 1.7. And that slope is approximately equal, but it's equal to the rise over the run. So that is equal. But since the 2.6 is approximate the rise over run is approximately equal to 2.6 over 3 halves, which is 1.7. Now the process I want you to go through, I want you, when you do these problems, to write out everything. Show that you're following the procedures. Don't shortcut the procedures. Okay, well, this video is getting a little long. We'll do another one for a fundamental triangle for a function on a given interval because that's kind of the most important fundamental triangle we can talk about.